Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Rice Cast. My name is Anthony Russo. I'm sitting here, as always, with Dr. Pastor Willie Rice. Pastor Willie, how are you today? Doing great. A lot going on, uh, but uh, having a great week here at, uh, at Calvary. Every week at Calvary is a great week at Calvary. <laughs> Well, uh, most of the time, that's true, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Every week's a great week at Calvary. We say it all the time because it's true. That's the thing. Uh, We are, we are here. We are in our X-150 Impact Series. Another just outstanding weekend this last Sunday uh, in services. We had our Collide weekend this last weekend. That was pretty special. Were you able to be at yep, uh, some of that? Uh, certainly was there Monday night and, um, and just, uh, it was an incredible weekend over two, for those that don't know around, I think 280 students, mm-hmm. uh, across our four campuses were here and, uh, some other churches were able to join in smaller churches that, that aren't able to do something like that. And mm-hmm. we were happy to have them apart. And, uh, it was just, it was just fantastic to see all those students so worshiping the Lord. They were here, I mean, what a weekend. They were here, I think, all day Saturday, Sunday, mm-hmm. Monday, and I don't think they went home to Monday night at 9. And when they finally said, I, I was there when Matt Gibney got up and said, Collide is over. Mm-hmm. Collide weekend is over. And they just like, boo. They were like, no, no, no. And uh, parents nice. were probably going, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But but honestly, I mean, I say that just in jest. They're probably, you know, ready to right, go home. Sure. But I think if, if I were a parent uh, still of, of teenagers, I'd be like, I'm so grateful my students were mm. so excited to be there. And they were. I think we baptized 15 or so on Monday night. Yeah. So it was a fantastic weekend. Shout out to all of our, our youth guys uh, who are doing a fantastic job across all of our campus. And um, it was a great weekend. Yeah, it's been, I, I heard uh, I was chatting with. I don't want to quote who I was chatting with in case this number is off by a little bit. But I heard that this was the biggest collide by nearly a hundred students. Wow, so, that's fantastic! Like a yeah, substantial weekend uh, that was pulled off with excellence. We got to see the collide worship band here at the Clearwater campus on Sunday. Uh, it's a special time in the student ministry every year when we do it. But this one had a lot of great energy. That was exciting. Um, along the lines of housekeeping things uh, and special things going on. This coming Sunday, we got an old friend coming into town, uh, Pastor Willie. Yeah, more than an old friend, a uh, mentor, a father in the faith, uh, our beloved former pastor, uh, uh, Bill Anderson. Of course, he was uh, my pastor, so, uh, you know, um, it, 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 he was pastor here at Calvary 27 years in mm. the uh, over 150-year history of our church. No one has pastored a longer tenure than mm. uh, Dr. Bill Anderson. And um, there's just so much uh, that, uh, you know, we could talk about his legacy the entire time. It's been a few years since he's been here. It's really been before COVID. Um, and uh, a number of things, uh, obviously, COVID stopped uh, traveling and so forth. Right. And, uh, and, um, and uh, even before that, um, his uh, wife, Addie, mm-hmm. of many, many years, had grown ill and frail, and he could not leave as much as he used to. And so he really deterred traveling. And I know there were a couple of times we had tried to get him to come. We all, For years, he would come every year, mm-hmm. once a year. It was kind of a ritual, and we always looked forward to a big weekend with Pastor Anderson coming back home. And uh, we did that probably for 15 or so years. And then... Um, Addie became ill, and mm. and he was unable to come, and then of course COVID, and then she passed, and uh, so it's been a couple of years now since he's been back to uh, Calvary, and uh, so uh, it's been since before COVID, and certainly this is the first time since Addie has passed away, uh, which was a little bit ago. So. Um, It's going to be special to have him back home and back at Calvary for the first time in a few years. Mm. Yeah, I wonder if we might talk about that just for a minute because I do know – we know coming out of COVID, all these new families coming into the Calvary life and may not have a sense of just the importance of uh, Brother Bill, as I think he was most commonly referred to as around here. Um, I I guess maybe if you would, for some of our listeners, uh, describe a little more just the impact on you personally – 
uh, and how we might still be feeling his impact here at Calvary today. Yeah, there's so many things. Again, 27 years, uh, and I was, a, as some people know, part of my story is uh, for both Cheryl and I, we were uh, students here uh, mm-hmm. in high school, uh, late middle school, high school. I was, her, she, her family came to know the Lord here at Calvary. So he was our pastor. He was our pastor. I really had two pastors growing up. Uh, at different points, and he so he was, but he was my pastor through my high school years, uh, oversaw my ordination and licensing to ministry and all those things. Mm. So uh, he had a profound impact on my life and continues to have a profound impact. We still talk every few weeks about various things, and um, you know, just one of the wisest, most spiritual, most godly men that I've ever known. And mm. uh, you know, for years, uh, you know, people would come up and talk to me about. Um, you know, they might think they were stepping on some kind of eggshell, like, we really love Pastor Anderson. And my response was always, not as much as I do, or, you know, <laughs> at least I'm going to tie you for first in that department. Yeah. Um, because he had such an impact in my life. But if you talk about the legacy of Calvary, hey, our location, where we are now, mm-hmm. the fact that we moved outside of downtown Clearwater, that was yeah. his vision toward the end of his ministry, that the future was going to lie elsewhere in terms of our impacting this area. Calvary Christian High School was his brainchild. He had the vision for starting a Christian high school in our area wow. when a lot of people thought that was completely crazy. Uh, and those are just a few of the things. Uh, several churches were planted. What many people don't know, today we have an East Lake campus, but that was originally planted as a mission church. That, that was a separate autonomous church for a number of years, uh, but then struggled toward, uh, you know, you know, for a while. And, and now we've had a campus out there coming up on 10 years. But the fact that we have that property in that location, that goes back to his leadership, his ministry. Mm. Um, and so, so many things that, um, you know, his quarter of a century plus leading at Calvary set the stage for where we are today yeah. and what we continue to reap the harvest in. Mm-hmm. So um, it's hard to calculate his influence. Mm. To us, it's incalculable. And uh, for those who have come in in the last few years, just know a great leader, a great preacher, I think a scholar, a theologian, one of the smartest men I've ever been around, mm. and um, just so wise. And, and, and uh, you know, in a day when so many people don't finish the race well, he finished well, a man of character and integrity, a man of prayer, um, a man who was theologically rock solid. And uh, so in just so many ways, mm. we love and appreciate him. And uh, he has had a great influence on us here at Calvary. So it's just going to be so good. So if you're new, uh, we invite you to come Sunday yeah, night. For sure. Obviously, this is kind of for people who you know, have an affinity for him. We knew we'd be attracted to this. But if you're new, we want you to come. It's going to be a time of kind of an interview, but we're just going to give him, you know, softball after softball, just letting him talk. And what we really want to do is just tell the stories of how this came to be on this campus and Mm. how he stewarded that. There are so many miracles uh, uh, that I just wanted people to hear. Uh, In fact, a couple of months ago, uh, we were at lunch together, and somehow we got to talking about these things. And, of course, he just tells story after story after story. Yeah. And I just got to thinking, these stories need to be told. Mm. This needs to be recorded. This yeah, needs yeah. to be, uh, you know, uh, preserved for the sake of posterity. So um, uh, we're going to do that Sunday night. It's going to be a special time, and I hope many people will be here to be a part of it. It is going to be so so special. This Sunday night, 6 p.m. here at the Clearwater Campus is where it's all happening. Uh, we've also, we're taking this event because we know uh, traveling is hard for some. There's so many that I interact with online each and every week that it, it can just be very laborious to get to certain things. So this will be online uh, if you cannot make it to the campus and you'd like to join us. We've gotten that question a lot. We will be streaming this particular thing, but you're going to want to be here at the Clearwater. It's so cool. It's happening at the Clearwater campus, and he was so instrumental in all that. It's going to be a special night. Uh, and we hope that you can join us. I'll put uh, a link to that uh, description and all that stuff in the show notes if you want to go back and check that out. Put that on your calendars to be a part of it. And it's very cool it's happening here because X-150 is so tied. It, it's, it's, it's just so, it's so fun to talk about because it's so tied to the legacy of Calvary as much as it is casting vision for the future of Calvary. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, many people, we say it a lot, you know, it's it, the whole thing started at the 150th anniversary of Calvary as a church. And you think about somebody who was leading it for 27 years of that. Uh, this just special. It's special to see all that stuff come together, and it's going to be a great night. 
We talked uh, some about the uh, X-150 Impact Vision this last Sunday. We talked about this is a, a, a particular topic that a lot of people have been excited about, a lot of energy behind, and it is none other than Calvary College, Pastor. I uh, had a couple questions, follow-up questions for you about Calvary College. And my first one was this. Is this uh, – Calvary College, is this something that we were kind of just – within the last couple of months thinking, uh, where should we be headed? And maybe this would be a fun idea. Or is this an idea that goes back a little further than that for you? No, it's actually something we've been thinking about for uh, quite a few years. Um, uh, just um, we've been even talking to a variety of partners through the last couple of years and just the timing was never right. The door never opened. Mm. Uh, that, that was the right moment. Um, the, um, um, and now the time seems right. There were a number of things, um, you know, uh, that that just caused us to really start thinking about it. Um, the uh, first of all, the success of our high school, mm. which just has just grown up to be one of the largest in the state of Florida, um, and uh, so the fact that we have educational facilities and and God seems to have blessed that effort. Uh, there seemed to be a need in this area. Mm. You know, there used to be a, a very thriving Christian college in Clearwater, the Clearwater Christian College, that had several hundred students, and for a number of reasons, it eventually had to close. To me, that leaves a gaping kind of hole in in our area. Mm. Uh, of fully accredited collegiate education, and so um, we we were longing. Well, then then we saw we were longing for it because then we saw all these young people coming into our uh, orbit uh, in interns and apprentices and so forth. Yeah, and. Um, uh, so often they didn't have their college education completed, uh, but they were local. They were in our ministry, so they had to go to local college options, many of which are good, mm-hmm. but they weren't, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, many of them are not Christian education yeah, from yeah. a similar worldview. So they were just kind of check off the box by getting a collegiate education. Um, and uh, so w- we began to realize, hey, there's a need. I wish we had an option. So we spent some time talking to partners about that, and again, it just – for some reason, we just never write. I mean, even before COVID, we were talking to some people. Then COVID interrupted that. Uh, a lot of things were put on hold. So it's been something that we have been talking about and thinking about for a couple of years. Mm. And as we approach this last stage of X-150 and began to envision X-150 impact, we, we really identified it as one of the primary targets, one of the big headlines of this campaign mm. that we felt like we should go after. And uh, so the time seems right. And we got a lot of the, uh, if you were here Sunday or at any of our campuses, you got to meet the leader of what became like, what will be our partner, uh, uh, Mr. Clayton Clore. Am I saying that last yes, time? Yes, right? Clayton Clore. Clayton Clore. Uh, outstanding guy. It was really, uh, just his energy about this oh, yeah. uh, partnership was just beaming off of that stage on Sunday. And again, if you missed that, we'll put the uh, link in the show notes to the service. But um, I guess maybe for a listener, uh, what what are some things that make them such a uniquely advantageous partner for an initiative yeah. like this one? Well, it just right partner, right time. And by the way, we were talking to Babs College of Florida even before, just, you know, again, again, COVID, a number of things just it wasn't the right time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so last year, uh, and Clayton has been a pastor in Central Florida. He's well-credentialed, a uh, graduate of Mid-America Seminary, and spent a lot of time in institutional life at Mid-America Seminary. And in many ways, I, I knew Clayton for, you know, we've known each other for, I guess, you know, close to 20 years mm. and just you know one of the sharp pastors in our state and uh and yet he you know also had that itch for that edu- you know kind of institutional educational bent and wondered you know maybe in the future is that part uh, of his um, his calling so when he called me last year to say hey you haven't heard yet but i'm going to be the next president of the baptist college Fire. Mm. first of all it was fantastic perfect choice uh second thought was um hey i got an idea you know, you need to know we were having that. And we spent, you know, an hour talking. And he was like all in from the get-go. So it's the perfect timing. What makes him a partner? Obviously, a perfect partner. Um, obviously, Clayton's leadership. Coming in as a new president who's very visionary, very entrepreneurial, and realizes that that college needs a presence on the peninsula of Florida. As he said, it's in the central time zone. 5% of Florida's population is in the central time zone. I didn't zone. know that yes. until Sunday, yeah. Uh, 95% of Florida's population is in the Eastern time zone. And, um, uh, you know, he realizes that for that college to really meet the needs of Baptist churches in Florida, 
they need to be on the peninsula mm. at some point, some yeah. presence. So that's still, I mean, that's very much a part of their agenda. Uh, I told him about our desire to have uh, collegiate education on our campus, real teachers, real classes, fully accredited, Christian worldview, theologically grounded, all of those things. They checked all those boxes. Mm. So while this is a school that a lot of people in our area don't know anything about because mm. it's you know, it's in an area of the state they never go to. Right, right, right. Um, it's, uh, you know, I think it's, he told me the other day, two miles from the Alabama line. Got to be. Yeah, So, uh, I, I mean, two miles. I didn't know it was that close. So, um, you know, it, it's very close. It's it, in South Alabama. It, it really is. Uh, it's just <laughs> really a suburb of Dothan, Alabama. Yeah, yeah. And if you've been to Dothan, you go, there are suburbs to yeah. Dothan, Alabama. <laughs> uh, well, this is a gr- Dothan's a great town. I love Dothan. I have family that live there. And... Um, but it's just, you know, 20 minutes, yeah, 30 yeah. minutes from there. And so a lot of people don't know about it. Mm-hmm. But, again, fully accredited. They're financially sound, no debt. Uh, they're theologically, maybe the most important to us, is that they're theologically aligned. This mm-hmm. has always been a conservative school, theologically grounded. And now with a new leader, a new president, visionary leader, uh, it's just the right time. This is the right partnership. And it allows us from day one in the fall of 2024, to say there are college classes on our campus with live teachers, and it's going to be fully accredited. Mm. That's what we're working toward, that uh, Calvary College will be an extension of the Baptist College of Florida, and we're working for that. Super exciting. Yeah, that is just to to think that we could be rolling that quickly, and his energy for the project, it was just an exciting thing to hear and discuss uh, I think that there some people might have some questions. I might toss it, you know. So it would be here at the Clearwater campus. Do yes. we know exactly where these classes will be taking place? Or? Yeah, one of the uh, – no, not exactly mm-hmm. yet, but uh, we've been asked that question a lot, so I'm happy to address it. Um, it we have several great opportunities, some that we're very excited about that I, I really even can't talk about in detail. Mm-hmm. But there are – First of all, I tell people we could start tomorrow if we had to mm. because we have obviously outstanding educational facilities as part of Calvary Christian High School. So if we needed to, we could, you know, have night classes uh, from 5 to 10 in the evening, something sure. like that. A lot of people have gone to college that way. So if we needed to, we could immediately start having collegiate classes next week if mm. everything else were ready. Um, so, A, we can do there. We have also explored uh, the possibility of, of, of buying some – um, uh, structures nearby that uh, are either on the market or we have reason to believe will be on the market. And uh, we've looked at leasing space in uh, nearby uh, office areas. So we have a couple of options. And uh, there are some options even now that really we even can't make public yet, but we're exploring very, very seriously. So we believe there are some real strong options to having a separate physical presence of Calvary College on our campus. Mm. Exciting, exciting stuff. We actually also have a website up and running for this guy. Did you know that, Pastor Roy? Yeah, I think so. Just for some initial information, absolutely. You can put your email and your name in there yeah. so you can stay up to date. You can be the first one to be notified about what's going on at Calvary College. And I'll put that link in the show okay, notes fantastic. as well because I just – I just love putting links yep. in the show notes. Okay. That just gives me life. <laughs> um, so th- th- another thing we talked about Sunday, we talked a lot about th- some practical things that are going on. Um, but you went in on Sunday on uh, the, the really the spiritual ramifications of pouring into tomorrow's leaders. Yep. Uh, that has been a part of the vision really from the start, the X-150 vision. We It was uh, kind of like congealed in X-150 advance when we set the – 150, raise up 150 champions. Um, but when you think about tomorrow's faith leaders, uh, you, you think about who will be the generation to come up and lead within our faith community following you, what do you think is the most important thing you can hand down to them? To tomorrow's faith leaders, what's what's the, the most important thing we can equip them with? Well, always hard to say the most important thing yeah, is the, yes. the most important thing, obviously, is a relationship with God through Christ and to make sure their own spiritual walk is real and vibrant and grounded in gospel truth. You know, don't want to assume that's a given, sure. but it should be. But let's state that mm-hmm. we obviously nothing greater we can give than to point people 
to the Gospels by which if they trust in them, believe in the Lord Jesus, they can have a relationship with God. I, I say, when you go beyond that, to me, for the next generation leaders, next generation leaders, to be grounded in the truth, mm. to be grounded in doctrinal, convictional truth. Now, there are so many things we want to hand down to them, practical skills and wisdom and all those things. But th- there is nothing so important, particularly in this age when the truth is under assault, as uh, foundational, convictional, biblical truth. Mm grounding them in the truth. And uh, so as we look for a partnership and as we contemplate who we want to be, that's the thing we want to make sure is that this would be the place that without apology, we are teaching not just consistent with a Christian worldview, Mm -hmm. but we are advocating and we are studying and we are preparing students who have a Christian worldview. Uh, College is different than high school, which is different than middle school. And um, we do not come at it and and pretend to be unbiased. Um, uh, We think it's uh, colleges on the left that tend to be indoctrination centers that, that uh, you know, you have to believe this. But, but we don't hesitate to say we are teaching from this vantage point. Mm-hmm. We do want people to think and to be able, it's not just, you know, I, I think education is not just what to think, but how to think, how to process correctly, how to think critically and discern carefully. But we clearly want to make sure people are aware of the gospel and that we are teaching consistent with the gospel and that our goal is that we turn out students who are completely committed to the gospel and to the gospel mission. Mm-hmm. And it will, uh, there was another aspect too we, I meant to bring it up a minute ago, but um, I know I had talked with Paul Colton about this at one point when we were discussing all this. And some people don't know that even to like go out and be a, a missionary with the IMB, there are certain collegiate like qualifications that need to be checked and things yep. that people need to do. And something like this would allow us yeah, to there are, you know, things. there are in many things just a base level of educational requirements. Uh, people say, why? Well, for the same reason that, uh, you know, to do other things, you have to have certain base level requirements. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, we want to make sure that people are prepared and they, you know, uh, are educated, to, you know, in, in a proper way. But uh, for Christian ministry, we also want to make sure they're grounded in doctrine and right. grounded in um solid theological principles therefore we value this and uh and and you're right our mission partners whether it be IMB or the North American Mission Board there is a a a ground floor if you will base level of educational requirements that are necessary so we've had students coming to us who need this and we've just sent them to St. Pete College or USF or local colleges right, right. that, um, you know, they're just checking off a box. Mm-hmm. Well, how much better would it be if they're not just checking off a box and say, mm-hmm. I have a, a bachelor's degree? They're getting Christian training. They are being prepared for ministry. That's much more important. And that's what we're going to try to do here. Super exciting. And again, I'll put the uh, the Calvary College link in the show notes, put the X-150 link in the show notes, and I'll share this about that. Uh, if you go to calvary.us slash X-150, because uh, I know we saw a lot of this already on Sunday, uh, but you have people who have been involved in higher education or have taught at that level, and they are saying, hey, this sounds awesome. How can I get involved? If you go to calvary.us slash X-150, there's a, a button there, a, a link that you can click, and just express interest, and someone uh, will follow up with you and and tell you about ways that you can get involved as we're fleshing this whole thing out and bringing it to life. But uh, thank you for sharing more about that, Pastor. This is something, again, I know a lot of our people are excited about. And uh, as things develop and we have more fun things to share, I'm sure that we'll be sharing them. Uh, but this was a, this was a, a great two weeks uh, as we started this campaign. You feel, you feel like there's a lot of good momentum behind it so far? Absolutely. The, the enthusiasm's off the charts. Mm-hmm. People are enthusiastic. People are excited about the vision. They want to be part of it. And uh, I just believe that the next uh, few weeks are going to be really exciting here at Calvary. Special, special time. Uh, thank you, listeners, for being here with us today. Uh, appreciate everybody who uh, listens to the podcast, reaches out, rates it, leaves a review. That's always so helpful. Again, all of these uh, links, everything we talked about in the show notes, uh, if you want to go back in and check all that out. And uh, we hope to see you Sunday morning and Sunday night for the Bill Anderson event. And we'll be back here with another podcast very soon. Thank you.